exactly five years today that he's been with me. At first, I couldn't stand it. Now, I'm just used to it. I don't know his name. I know he's average in appearance, wears a dark blue suit, is greying at the temples, and has a common face. I was sitting in Palermo Park, eating my sandwiches, when suddenly, I felt something touch my head. It was the very same man who now, as I tell you this story, keeps whacking me, mechanically and impassively, with an umbrella. The first time I met the royal pokiness, I turned around with indignation. He just kept hitting me. Are you crazy? I said. Seeing that he was not about to change his attitude, I slapped him. His face was all red, and at that moment, I felt sorry for him. I felt remorse for having hit him so hard. After all, the man wasn't exactly bludgeoning me. Convinced that I was dealing with a madman, I tried to escape, but the man followed me, wordlessly continuing to hit me. So I began to run. Now I must point out that not many people run as fast as I do. He took off after me, vainly trying to land a blow. The man was huffing and puffing and gasping, so that I thought if I continued to force him to run at that speed, my tormentor would drop dead right there and then. So I decided to stop. Can you believe it? There wasn't a single trace of gratitude or reproach on his face. And yes, of course, he still continued to poke me in the head with his stupid umbrella. I thought it was best to return home. I took the 1537 train home. I took the first seat. He stood right beside me and held onto the railing with his right hand. This left his left hand free to unrelentingly continue to whack me with the umbrella. We walked home and everyone stupidly turned to stare at us. It occurred to me to say to them, what are you looking at? Haven't you ever seen a man hit a girl on the head with an umbrella? But it also occurred to me that they probably never have seen such a spectacle. But I had a plan. When I reached my house, I was going to slam the door in his face. Okay, that didn't quite happen. He must have read my mind, because he firmly slammed his foot in the way of the door and pushed his way in with me. From that time on, he has continued to hit me on the head with his umbrella. As far as I can tell, he has never either slept or eaten anything. His sole activity consists of hitting me. Still and all, our relationships have not always been good. I've asked him on many occasions and in all possible tones to explain his behaviour to me, to no avail. He has wordlessly continued to hit me on the head with his umbrella. Many times I've let him have it with punches, kicks and even God forgive me. Umbrella blows. He would meekly accept the blows. He would accept them as though they were part of his job. And precisely the weirdest aspect of his personality is that unshakable faith in his work, coupled with a complete lack of animosity. in any event, I have realised that less and less people are staring at this spectacle. It seems that, because it's no longer strange to me, that it rubs off on others. I can now get on with my normal life, well, as normal as it can be, without having to worry about what others think. And now, I have recently come to the realisation that I couldn't live without those blows. Now more and more frequently, a 
a certain foreboding overcomes me. A new anxiety is eating at my soul. The anxiety stemming from the thought that this man, perhaps when I need him the most, will depart and I will no longer feel those umbrella taps that help me sleep so soundly. 